Where did brands come from? The answer is the Victorians, the people of Great Britain in the 1800s. So the 1800s was a period of incredible development and innovation. The Industrial Revolution was in full swing. You had mass urbanization, people coming from the rural areas and the farms to work in the factories in the cities. And in this explosion of innovation, just as a quick side note, created an incredible amount of things. So here's a quick thing that during the short space of period within our history, the Victorians invented. Victorians invented photography, the pedal bicycle, the paddle steamship, postage stamps and post boxes, the Christmas card, Morse code, rubber tires, tarmac roads, the sewing machine, the first glider flown by a pilot, the public flushing toilet, steel, safety matches, pasteurizing process, the subway slash underground trains, the typewriter, chocolate Easter eggs, mass railways, voice recordings, electric street lighting, the telephone, and my favorite, the weekend. So at this time, you had mass production and large populations living in the cities, where previously, if you lived in a village and you wanted bread, you would go to Mr. Baker, who had his market stall in the market square. You would buy directly from him your bread. You knew him. You knew each other's families. Everybody knew everybody because it was a small village. Now, suddenly you have mass populations living in large industrial cities and food was being mass produced. So at this time, some unscrupulous manufacturers invoked the darker side of capitalism with a money at all costs attitude and some practices started being invoked like bulking out bread with things like sawdust so they could reduce their cost of production and sell more product at less cost and increase their profit. You also had examples of chalk being mixed in with ice cream and all sorts of strange things bulking out food products. Of course, there was no food standard agencies back then, like there are today, to regulate food and ingredients. So as a result, there were cases of poisonings, mass poisonings, and a lot of people got sick. So a lot of people uh, had a lot of anxiety about buying products. And the answer was that some clever manufacturers then decided, I will put my name on the product. I will stamp it with my name to say this is a family business and if you buy from me and my company with my name on it, you can trust me. And this is how brands were invented. So if you look at chocolate, Cadbury's, that came from Mr. Cadbury. If you actually look at the ad, this is an ad from the 1800s, it says, finest ingredients, quality, guaranteed. So I guarantee that this is real milk cocoa and not something bad. And Sam, you also had uh, biscuits, the Jacob Brothers, Jacob's Biscuits is very popular. Mr. Coleman made Coleman's Mustard. So everybody was putting their names on things. Now as things developed, Mr. Lever of Unilever fame also realized, well, if we're putting this on the packaging, I could put um, something that relates to the product that people can relate in their minds that this is a, a superior product. So he called the soap sunlight soap. So this is the first link between branding and advertising is associating. You're associating sunlight with soap, differentiates the soap. People think that soap is better because it reminds them of sunlight. It's cleaner. It, and, and that whole train started as well. Over time, as the market developed further, people needed to differentiate even more. So this is where made up names essentially came along. So things like OXO Cubes, Kodak is a made up name for a camera company to stand out, but you could also trademark a name easier than Mr. Than Mr. Smith's cameras. And then you got into packaging, for example, you have Quality Street here. So how do you put innovative packaging colors with your name to stand out in the marketplace and on a shelf? So ultimately it came down to what was good branding? It was uh, a unique name, a unique color that you owned, and ideally unique packaging. This was still in the early days, but those were the three key things. And the best embodiment of that was Coca-Cola. If you look at the Coca-Cola packaging that has been around for almost nigh on a hundred years, uh, unique name, Coca-Cola, in unique script, 
in a color they own, everybody knows the red, and a unique bottle. This, this bottle was recognized universally because it was used everywhere in their distribution for you know, 60 plus years, and it was trademarked. So that's the best embodiment. It's one example of how you pull everything together in a brand and how brands evolve from just putting my name on it, you can trust me, to standing out with colors, packaging, and pulling that all together. That is where branding came from. On another side note, you might ask why the word branding was used for this type of activity. And the answer was that back in the days when farmers were getting their cows stolen, it was very hard to prove that it was your cow. Even if you caught them, you say, that's my cow, they'd be like, prove it, no, it's my cow. So the answer that farmers came up with was to actually physically brand them with a hot poker and an iron, like this poor cow here, to actually brand them with a mark and say, that is my brand, that is my mark on that cow. So when manufacturers started doing this, they used the same term to say, I am branding it with my name or my logo so that you know that it's mine. This is my product and I have my mark on it. That's what it came from. Uh, another side note, obviously they don't do this to cows today. They just have a little tag in their ear. So that's uh, good progress for you. If you are in business and recognize you need a marketing plan but have little experience in marketing, check out my website in the link in the description below to find more resources and how we can help with marketing plans. And also don't forget to subscribe, like, and turn on notifications for more content like this when it becomes available.